I'm riding through the neighborhood. I'm riding through my neighborhood here in Florida. We've been living here for, we've been living in Florida almost what, three years. Oh yeah, about three years now. You know, it's gorgeous. Look at this. I love those pots they got out in front of their house right there. Those colors and remind me of Africa, those bright, vibrant colors. Yeah, but uh, this is the community here. It's, it's gorgeous, man. It's gorgeous here in, uh, you know, Orlando, Florida. You know, we have the pool right outside. Let me see. Let me see if I can pause it and turn it. Well, that ain't, that's not gonna work for me. All right, Amazon Prime, get those, get that stock right there. And then they got a little water pond here. Florida's heavy with um, um, water ponds and retention ponds and things like that. And that's what Africa need. Look at this guy from Amazon Prime, he getting it in running dropping those packages off you know anybody you can invest in any com uh, company i would recommend it and, and suggest to everyone to start investing but here's a little park right here i just wanted to show you know my friends my people in africa look they got a little water park inside that park this is the type of thing that we can have over in uh in africa look at that you know just a little simple you know pool and things like that you know little kids park right here kids can play but the houses there are, you know, one level, two level homes. Really, really nice community. You see these communities all throughout Orlando. This is the Vista Lake area. I don't know if you guys know about it, but this is one of the, uh, you know, more, you know, uh, premium communities, I guess, or areas, you know. But um, yeah, we've been living here for three years. And uh, it's from, I'm in Florida, I'm in Orlando now, and it's just gorgeous, man. It's gorgeous to be back. It's beautiful to be back. You know, so I've been in Africa, of course, you know, and it's bittersweet because, you know, you have, you want to bring everybody with you, but it ain't, you know, you can't bring everybody with you. You know, all you can do, because that's in the next level. So all you can do is go lay the foundation so that when, you know, it's needed, you know, that is there, that's available. You know what I'm saying? Especially for our children. Look at that, it's gorgeous going up out of here. Especially for our children in terms of uh, producing a future for them. We can actually have communities like this in Africa. We can't, it'll be hard to do it here. You know, there's a lot of Hispanic people here, you know, having living, you know, there's white people, so the community is mixed. Orlando, you're going to see predominantly Hispanic people. Predominantly Hispanic people. You know, and this is it's far different from where we came when we were in uh, when we were in um, Atlanta. When we were living in Atlanta, you know, it's a lot of black people there, but Atlanta, Atlanta's very dangerous. Atlanta's very dangerous, and I don't know if you guys know my story. Some of you guys know, but I got shot in Atlanta. So, you know, we end up, we left Atlanta, I mean, just at a gas station, just, you know, just random. I mean, you guys know I have children, and, you know, I, at that time, you know, I, we've had about, what, one, two, three, we had four children at that time. And, you know, I was going to a gas station, and, you know, two kids came along, car, you know, took the car, took my vehicle. I was in the passenger seat, they made us get out, two of them with guns, and one, you know, I got shot in Atlanta. So I had to move away from where most black people were convinced, you know, because it's great. You, can, you can lose your life. I mean, I was just in the, in uh, Atlanta and watching the news, and it's crazy. I have a couple good friends from my hometown that moved to Atlanta, and they end up, you know, moving away from our hometown, thinking they're getting away from the violence, moved down to Atlanta, and, and were killed in Atlanta. Atlanta, and that was supposed to be the black mecca for us. It was for a long time, a lot of prosperity. A lot of people made a lot of money in Atlanta, doing very well, you know, as opposed to where they were from. You know, however, the, you know, that's kind of shifted and changed and the whole dynamic of Atlanta changed in terms of being black, black Mecca. Now, Africa's that spot. Africa's that black Mecca. Yeah, so I'm coming up here, you know, um, yeah, this is my, this is my hood. Well, this is my neighborhood in Orlando. 
I've been to Connecticut, I've been to Atlanta, now I'm in Orlando, you know, I'm gonna do it all over again. I lived up and down the East Coast, you know, so I've laid roots and foundations up and down the East, East Coast, and now, you know, even all the way to uh, West Africa. West Africa. You know, we shouldn't be scared to be able to move out and to, you know, lay a foundation and, and have influence and have power, you know, in uh, different markets, you know, and inspire, you know, show people that, hey, listen, no matter what your situation you are in, you can always change that situation. It may take for you to get up and go to a whole nother place, but it's possible. You don't have to stay in the rut. You don't have to stay around, you know, those spirit busters and, you know, all those in your life who would you know, want to see you stay. You know, they say misery love company. That's gorgeous over there. I like how they got that colors. Yeah, misery love company. We used to go to this clubhouse all the time over here. It's like a sheer clubhouse thing. They got a little pirate ship, man. I'm, I should drive back here. Let me see. This, a, this gorgeous communities. Yeah, so, yeah, I just wanted to show my friends and those who just want to see the journey of how it is, man, you know, just as a black man, just a black man, that's a whole story by itself, just being a black man and, you know, all the pressure. I think a lot of times that go, you know, unacknowledged, you know, we understand, but I, I, I think society would have it that we focus more on. This the, the this the last issue we want to look at and face and talk about is the issue with the with the black man and you know this is plight and how we live in a whole society that you know is des really designed us that's designed against us you know they say we uh, society fails to embrace the black male variety. You know, so it's a, it's a, it, you know, it, it's a horrible thing. It's a horrible, horrible thing, and it's a tragic thing. And there should be some charges brought against those who actually put the black man in this condition. I mean, nobody even care anymore. That's crazy. We lost all of our nationalistic movements. We lost all of our political movements, and you know, all of those organizations and foundations that was really fighting for equality and you know equal opportunity under the law equal rights you know uh, even american society as a whole all of that's being lost all of that's being taken away you know i've been over here and it's crazy how they can take all these rights away and i've been studying about this stuff a long time they're taking all these rights away but they're they're making it seem like it's in our best interest and that's the scary thing you know and they tell us hey you know this is going on or this pandemic or whatever they're saying you know national security so we need you to do this we need you to take these have these id cards or you know we need you to take this vaccination you know you have to wear a mask you have to stand six feet apart you know uh just all of this stuff man all of this stuff has to be questioned and best believe it's not you know it's not what you think the way you think things are trust me it's something else that's going on that's way beyond what you think and and, and it's controlling the situation but what we do know, like the prices, I mean, pr prices are ridiculous here. Things are so expensive. Not only, in, you know, Florida and Connecticut, you know, all the prices on everything is all high. You know, we're in a uh, pandemic. You know, the government couldn't, you know, like put a cap on corporate revenues or something like that. Seriously, the government can't do that. You know, I know they're giving out money and stuff, but all of that, they know that money's going right back into the corporations. They know that money going right back into the corporation. So is that really helping? <clears throat> so we got to have a smart plan. We definitely have to be planning, you know, to, you know, whatever we can accumulate to invest and, you know, uh, find ways that we can create income streams and, you know, provide safety nets for our families. So I'm just checking in with you guys, man. Life is life is wonderful. It come with many challenges, but the greater reward, the greater the challenge. You know what I mean? The more you're doing, the more uh, negative is going to try to interject itself into what you're doing. But don't, it's not going to stop you. You don't need everybody. You can get a long way by yourself. And that's how, it, that's how it's going to be. 
you know, because, you know, we as a people, you know, we got a lot going on. And, that, <laughs> and that's just going to be a challenge for us to come together in that type of way. However, personal success exists, group success exists. And that's, that means sometime, you know, uh, moving to another country. Tell my D and D's right now. I'm about to pick pick up some uh, coffee for my people. And um, thank you. Would you like to try avocado toast today? Till next video. Peace.